Hello everybody, so right now you can see a motorcycle of my dreams. So this is CF Moto NK800. So let's talk about specs for, for a while. This bike has parallel twin engine. This parallel twin engine has 100 horsepower. I know that some countries has only 90, some countries have 95. Right now we're in China, so this bike has 100 horsepower. The curb weight of the bike is 196 kilograms. Uh, again, there are two options. So the, currently we have an option which has the key and it has 5 inches dash. There's a second option which has 8 inches dash and keyless ignition. That bike actually is the bike that I would like to purchase because talking about the city, I feel like it's more applicable. First off, you can see all those traffic lights. You don't have to mount your phone. You can connect your phone, you just leave it in your pocket or leave it in your bag and you're just traveling around because that dash looks really good. That bike actually is 3 kilograms heavier than this one. So this one is 186. The top notch option is 190, 189 kilograms. So it's like 3 kilograms difference. This bike looks crazy. So again, it is a bit reminiscent of the KDM because KDM and this bike, they're sharing the same engine. However, I do prefer this design over KDM. First off, it has really sharp edges, very sharp corners, looks very nice, very aggressive, very aggressive look. And uh, I do feel like this bike is one of the best looking bikes that you can buy in China. I mean, talking about naked, here in China, this bike has no competition talking about Chinese brands. This is a top-notch Chinese bike that you can buy. Again, the price of this bike here in China is 46,000 RMB. Don't forget you have to pay 10% taxes, so it will be around 50. And the top models will be around 50,000 initially, so eventually you're going to pay 55. This is something around $6,800. So this bike is very cheap competitors will be way more expensive. I will tell you one thing about KDM in China. KDM 790 costs $13,000 here in China. This one is $6,800. As you can see, this is basically the same bike, which is arguably better looking. And I don't really know who is going to buy KDM over this one. Again, people ask questions about reliability. I do think that this bike is very reliable. Again, I rode some older CF motos and they're not very nice in terms of their reliability, but I do feel like those bikes, they're getting better and better incrementally. So for example, this bike feels so much better than old uh, CF motos. And taking that almost all the components of the bike belong to KDM, this bike, it's not the most reliable machine, but it's decent enough. Let's talk about other specifications. So let's talk about brakes. This bike has J1 brakes, which belong to Brembo. So basically, this is the same sort of brakes that you are go going to get from Brembo. Some may argue that there is no difference. These brakes are definitely cheaper than Brembo. But I rode this bike for an hour now, and I can tell you that they stopped the machine as well as Brembo would. So, of course, this bike automatically has ABS everywhere front wheel has ABS, the rear, rear wheel has ABS, you cannot turn it off, you cannot turn it on, permanent ABS. This bike looks really good, but what is the most important thing that the look does a great job in terms of your experience. So as you can see here, as I can see because you're looking from the another angle, it has a great big headlight. This headlight is reminiscent of a bull. I do like it a lot. Some people say that it's way too big, they don't like the design, and once you start the bike, it has this special effect which many people like. Other than that, this bike has many other things. This bike has a very nice muffler over here. Again, the sound of the bike is just incredible. It has really nice foot pegs over here. Some people say that they are too high, but for me, it's a really decent option. Again, let me sit on the bike. All right. So this bike has 780, 795 millimeters 
uh, height. And for me, I'm 185 centimeters. This bike is just what I need. So again, of course, I can flat foot it and I feel very confident. I feel very comfortable. I can see that very nice pre-wide full tank in front of me. It's pretty big, but you know, talking about the competition again, it's pretty narrow compared to MT-09. It's pretty narrow compared to other bikes, which means that this bike would be a very good option for a city. When you're driving the traffic, when you're riding your motorcycle in the traffic, it's very important to split lines. And in order to do that, if you don't want to stop being stuck in the traffic like a car, you're going to <laughs> go through it, right? So because this bike is pretty narrow, it's pretty maneuverable and you can get through the traffic no problem. Again, this bike would never be as maneuverable as some small displacement bikes such as Kawasaki Z400, such as Yamaha R3 or something like NK450. But taking this class, it's middle range, it's middle size uh, naked bike. This bike is the lightest and this bike gives you exactly what you need. I rode this bike for an hour, but I feel like I need to ride a bit more. So before we start riding the bike, I'll tell you that it has quick shifter up and down. I tried a couple of times, works pretty well but sometimes I have this jerky movement, so I don't like it. Every time I switch up, it gives me like some kind of a jerky reaction, which I don't really like. Uh, but every time I downshift, it's very nice and smooth, so I do like it. Gearbox is very nice as well, pretty smooth. Not as smooth as Kawasaki, because my current bike is Kawasaki Z400. I, I am a beginner, and yeah, I do like to ride this bike <laughs> nonetheless. Kawasaki would have more approachable for a beginner rider uh, gearbox, but this one is still good enough. And again, mirrors are really nice, I can see everything. Throttle is very responsive, especially when you're switching to a sport mode, it's very responsive. And again, once you open the throttle, you start flying as if you're a bird. So, uh, this bike has cruise control, three modes, uh, it's a very fast bike, very comfortable. I was riding with a passenger for a while, and to be honest, my private area feels really good about it. And the, the tank in front does a good job. The rear seat is pretty comfortable as well. I'm not sliding much, so I feel really good. All right, guys, so this was my initial, initial thought about this bike. This bike looks amazing. And right now, I feel like we'll just keep on riding, and you'll see what we are going to do now. See you later, guys. Let's see how it goes. Wow, that's pretty loud. <laughs> Alright, let's go. That's a fast bike, by the way. It has 100 horsepower on in the sport mode. Rain mode gives it only 50 horsepower. So we can call it a beginner's bike. And the street mode allows this bike to use 80 horsepower. Actually, 80 horsepower feels really good. Again, right now, currently, I'm on street mode, which allows me to use 80 horsepower. More than enough for a city, taking that the, the max speed here ain't supposed to be more than 60 if you obey the law. However, some people do not obey the law. This is the reason why some people prefer to buy those bikes. Uh, yeah. So far, so good. As I already mentioned, I like, I like the design. I do like the color. I do prefer the bigger screen because I feel like it serves a great, great purpose. It's very useful screen. It's a very useful desk for, for a city. This bike brings smile to my face. Every time I ride, every time I twist the throttle, I feel so happy about it. Okay, this bike is pretty dangerous for a beginner rider and I am a beginner rider. So, yeah, maybe it's not the best choice for a person who rides for the first time, but that feeling that you got.
Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, those bikes here in China, they're called Widowmakers. And um, yeah, this is a very commonly used term because they're a Widowmakers cars, they're Widowmaker motorcycles. And this bike here in China is called Widowmaker as well because I've been told by my Chinese friend, by the way. So this bike is called Widowmaker because Chinese people did not get used to ride fast Chinese bikes. Not fast, but torquey Chinese bikes. This bike is very torquey. It's not as torquey as MT-09, but it's torqueyer than MT-07 for sure. So the thing is that most of Chinese bikes, they are very smooth actually. Um, they gain speed pretty smoothly. They operate in a higher range of wraps. This bike picks up torque straight from the bottom. So some people did not expect that to happen. And uh, yeah, many people crush themselves on those bikes. So this NK800 is a very dangerous bike. I have that smile on my face, stupid smile, as if I'm a kid who got a candy. All right, can we overtake the bus? Let's see. Probably, yes. Yeah, we can. Oh gosh, it feels so good. Why does it feel so good? So good to be bad. All right, I feel like <laughs> this is the best thing you can buy uh, here in China. This bike costs less than seven thousand dollars. Think about the competition. Talking about the competition, what do we have? KTM. The price of KTM in China is thirteen thousand dollars. Okay, let's talk about Z900. Z900 costs around fourteen thousand dollars here. It's just insane, insane, and people still buy those bikes over this one because it's a Chinese bike again this bike shares the same engine as KTM 790 so I see no reason whatsoever to buy KTM over this one taking that it's twice less expensive oh yeah that feels awesome guys that feels awesome yeah, this bike is very maneuverable. I do like it. It feels very light. It feels lighter than the competition. But um, yes, the price of this bike here in China is less than seven thousand dollars. Of course, if you're watching me from Europe or from United States, I know that this bike is not currently available in United States. But this motorcycle would be way more expensive there and uh, the competition is way cheaper i know that kawasaki costs around nine thousand dollars there in the united states so those bikes would be pretty much the same in terms of the price and uh, then i don't really know what to tell you maybe you just look at your priorities you have to evaluate the bike by yourself but here in China, don't think twice. If you're watching me from China, listen guys, just go for, for it. Just get to CF Moto. Uh, I don't know, they have those bikes for test drives, no problem. Ride a bike, don't think twice. No, you think twice, of course. Thinking twice, twice is good. Think twice, th think three times, it'll be even better. But overall, I feel like if you ride this bike, you'll come to a conclusion that this bike is exactly what you need if you are not a beginner bike if you're not a beginner sorry guys yeah i have that anxiety right now riding this motorcycle okay let's go further all right whoa that's fast that that feels good oh gosh it feels so good and you know <laughs> Uh, the power distribution is pretty rough it kicks your ass literally kicks your ass some bikes they're just gaining speed pretty smoothly even though those bikes are fast this bike yeah as i already said many times over this bike kicks your ass straight from the bottom so yeah some people like it some people don't <laughs> but overall i like it <laughs> i do like when the bike treats me this way 
0 to 60 3.4 3.5 seconds yeah this bike is fast top speed is 220 according to the article that I read but again as long as I'm riding here in China top speed doesn't matter acceleration is all I need all right guys so it is time for me to say goodbye to this bike I rode it for three days I rode over 300 kilometers I do like this bike a lot look no further if you're in China taking the price of the bike I don't think that you can buy anything better than this this bike is just awesome again it has its own problems quick shifting up and down works pretty well but sometimes it's not perfect overall this bike is not a beginner's bike but it gives you exactly what you need again I would miss this bike but not for a long time because I'm going to buy one probably as I already said many times I'm going to go with an option which has 8 inch dash which is a bit better for me uh, it's more applicable for a city I would say yeah guys this was my first motorcycle review I know that I'm not the best rider I'm not the most experienced person but overall I have an advantage because I'm in China and there are a bunch of bikes which are not available in other countries so if you are interested in some other bikes Chinese bikes or European bikes whatever wherever you like let me know there are a bunch of places where I can rent a bike maybe I can even buy a bike I can take it from my friends I'm a very friendly person so I have many friends yeah so once you have an idea once you have a suggestion please let me let me know in the comments uh, I will not ask you to like this video because I know that it's not the best one but I do hope that at least you got something from it I hope that it was at least a bit useful and again hope you like it see you in the next video bye guys